Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. So, to start things off, let's talk about Groundhog Day. For those who may not be familiar, Groundhog Day is an event observed in the United States and Canada every year on February 2nd. It derives from the Pennsylvania Dutch superstition that if a groundhog emerges from its burrow on this day and sees its shadow due to clear weather, it will retreat into its den and winter will persist for six more weeks. If it doesn't see its shadow because of cloudiness, spring will arrive early. Now, in my opinion, this annual event doesn't seem very big as other holidays like Easter, New Year's, Halloween, or Christmas. And if I recall, the last time I ever talked about Groundhog Day was during my blog of Bambi 2. But did you know that Rankin Bass made a holiday special which also features Groundhog Day? Well, that special is what I'm going to be blogging today. So, released to television on December 13th, 1979, the special is Jack Frost. Now, on for the plot of the special. In this, Jack Frost ushers in winter every year, but he is upset that he's unable to interact with humans since they cannot see him. When Jack falls in love with a young peasant girl named Elisa, he requests to be made human. His superior father, Winter, agrees to make him permanently human as long as he has a house, a horse, a bag of gold, and a wife by the beginning of spring. If not, he'll become a sprite again. When Jack arrives in January Junction and is introduced to Elisa and her family, he learns that they are oppressed by a greedy Cossack named Kubla Kraus who has eyes on the peasant's income, and of course, Elisa. So, Jack decides to overthrow Kubla Kraus while also contending with Elisa's childhood sweetheart, Sir Ravenal. So, what are my thoughts on this special? Well, in my eyes, this was a very sweet winter special. And to further explain why I like it, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, there's not too much trivia to talk about, other than the fact that it was directed by Jules Bass and Arthur Rankin Jr., and it was written by Romeo Muller. The special premiered on NBC on December 13, 1979, and to this day, it airs annually on AMC as part of its Best Christmas Ever programming block as of 2020. As for the stop motion itself, well... Like the other Rankin Bass specials, it's absolutely timeless. And I really like the set design and layout of January Junction. And I think the people who live there, despite being tormented by Kubla Kraus, are very kind and caring folks. And I also like the fact they use snowflakes as ice money during the winter. Plus, I think the world in the winter clouds and the job that the winter sprites do kind of make me think of Santa's Workshop or April Valley from Here Comes Peter Cottontail. As for the story, well, it's kind of familiar. I mean, it kind of feels pretty similar to Hans Christian Andersen's dark, tragic fairy tale, The Little Mermaid, in a way. Though, I'm hoping that the upcoming live-action Disney remake, which will be getting released next year, won't be as dark or tragic. Anyway, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. Let's start with our narrator, Pardon Me Pete, voiced by the late Buddy Hackett, whom was Marcellus Washburn from The Music Man, Tennessee Steinmetz from The Love Bug, and Scuttle from The Little Mermaid movies. This character is the official groundhog of Groundhog's Day in the special, and he's known for his catchphrase, Oops, pardon me which he utters before ducking back into his burrow upon seeing his shadow. Also, Pete is pretty much a celebrity figure by various magazine covers, including the cover of Time magazine. In my eyes, Pete seems like a likable character, and he's one of my favorite Rankin-Bass narrators, next to Seymour Sassafras and Sam the Snowman. Plus, 
I really love Buddy Hackett's voice performance, and I think Pete's songs like Me and My Shadow and February 2 are pretty catchy songs. The title character, Jack Frost, is voiced by Robert Morse, whom was Barnaby Tucker in The Matchmaker, which was, believe it or not, the inspiration for Hello, Dolly. Anyway, in my opinion, I feel like this version of Jack Frost was kind of the inspiration for DreamWorks and William Joyce's version of Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. And let me remind you, I don't support the idea of him being shipped with Elsa. If anything, the water knock is a better match for Elsa. <clears throat> anyway, in this special, Jack Frost is an invisible sprite that nobody can see or hear. And Jack hopes to become a human mortal in order to be with the beautiful Elisa. And he decides to overthrow Kubla Krauss since he has a majority of what Jack needs. Plus, I think Jack Frost is a very loyal and heroic character. Plus, he can be pretty mischievous and sneaky at times. In fact, my favorite part is when Jack Frost plays shadow pranks on Pardon Me Pete every Groundhog Day, when Jack saves Elisa from going over a waterfall, where he freezes Kubla Krauss and his knights by conjuring up a huge blizzard, and when he uses Dami to trick the Kanites into walking off the icy mountain to their destruction. Ha! <laughs> Knuckleheads! Next we come to the beautiful Elisa, voiced by Deborah Klinger, who voiced Martha Cratchit in The Stingiest Man in Town. In my eyes, Elisa is a friendly and imaginative young woman, and even though she couldn't see him at first, she considers Jack Frost as a hero. However, Elisa is hoping for a knight in golden armor to carry her away to a happy life. Next we come to Jack Frost's closest friends and co-workers, Snip and Holly, voiced by Don Messick and Dinah Lynn. Snip is a friendly and slightly sarcastic snowflake maker, and Holly is a beautiful snow gypsy. In my opinion, these two are pretty decent supporting characters, and the reason why they become human is so that they can keep watch on Jack and make sure he doesn't get into trouble. Next up is Sir Ravenel Wrightfellow, voiced by Sonny Melendres, who got to voice in the city that forgot about Christmas. Now, Sir Ravenel is a knight whom happens to be the man that Elisa harbors romantic feelings for, and he was also Elisa's childhood sweetheart. And in my opinion, Ravenel does make a pretty heroic character, especially during the scene where he helps rescue Elisa from Kubla Krauss's Knights. Finally, we have the corrupted Kubla Krauss, voiced by veteran Rankin Bass voice actor Paul Fries, whom also does the voices for the ghost host in the Haunted Mansion ride, Meow Reese from Chuck Jones' Gay Paris, and Disney's Professor Ludwig von Drake. Now trust me when I say that this Russian tyrant is so evil that even his own band of Cossacks left him. Anyway, I think Kubla Krauss is the most memorable character in the entire special. He lives in a large palace on Miserable Mountain with his ventriloquist dummy sidekick, Dami, his mechanical steed, Clankstopper, his robotic army of Knights, and other robotic servants, including robotic rodents. Plus, aside from his corrupted personality, Kubla Krauss can be a real bully. Like when he picks on the January Junction townsfolk and taxes them. And later, when he failed to capture Elisa in hopes to force her to be his bride, thanks to Jack Frost and Sir Ravenel challenging him, Kubla plots to have his canice destroy the town. Also, I think his villain song, There's the Rub, kind of feels like the rich man's song from Fiddler on the Roof. As for Dami, well, he's kind of like Elmo if he were made by Ivan Vanko. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Jack Frost is a pretty good special from Rankin Bass. The stop motion is timeless as usual. The voice acting is amazing. The songs are pretty unforgettable, 
and the story, while familiar, was pretty sweet. Also, I'm glad that Jack Frost did not succeed in becoming human, because without him, winter may never be the same. So, for those of you who may not have seen this special yet, you should definitely give this a watch. Not just during Christmas, but throughout the entire season of winter and on Groundhog Day. I give this special a 97% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me on Super Bowl weekend, where I look at a basketball movie, which just happens to be a sequel to a film that I blogged back in 2017. Mustang Power. Mustang <laughs> Power.